I had some light. You wanted that? He oh. said he wanted it. Oh, oh, great. Yeah. Wait. Like 51. I was there at 50, but uh, they was taking 51. Mm hmm. Okay, we're back here with uh, Bill Hook, a vet from the Korean War, a local person. He's going to share some of his memories of, of his service with us. Bill, how, how did you get started? In well, I enlisted in the Navy in uh, February of '48, and I went to boot camp in Great Lakes, and then I went to what they call Hospital Corps School. Mm -hmm. and I was a I was a corpsman in the Navy. Uh, I was stationed in the Naval Hospital in New York, and when the uh, Korean War started, my, uh, I was ordered to the 1st Marine Division in Camp Pendleton, California. Mm -hmm. I left there with the Fleet Marines and went to Japan, and then I was assigned to the 5th Marine Regiment, and I landed at Incheon on the 15th of September 1950 with the uh, 7th Marine Regiment. Mm -hmm. And then I went on from there to Seoul and back to Incheon and aboard ship and went around down the coast and up and made the landing at Wonsan. And uh, the landing at Wonsan, we were out to sea for 11 days because they mined the harbor and we couldn't get in to land. So after 11 days, we landed there. And uh, I don't know how long we were. We landed there in October. And our next. We went aboard. We went aboard uh, a train to try to get to Hung Nam, Ham Hung, which is south of the Chosen Reservoir. And uh, the guerrillas kept going up the train tracks, and we uh, we finally flew up. And we we're up there. We set up a, a casualty station, and then the Chinese entered the war, and we were evacuated from Hung Nam down to Pusan. Back up to Mason and uh, Tegu and Yongdong Po, and uh, I didn't. Uh, I spent 13 months there. My my job essentially was uh, as a, uh, a corpsman, which is a uh, well, the Army call them medics, the Marine Corps call them corpsmen. I spent four years in the Navy, and 16 months was in the Marine Corps. 13 months was in Korea. And, uh, a long time ago. Yeah. And that, you know, I don't remember everything that happened, but. Uh, we were basically given like the first medical yeah, care to Yeah, essentially, people. yeah. And then they went from us to a hospital ship or they're evacuated with helicopters, which I think was one of the first wars where they uh, used helicopters for evacuation. Yeah. But uh, and then they flew them, a lot of them went to Japan, a lot of them went home. But you were on on the ground. Yeah, I was I was Fleet Marine Force, which means I was a Navy corpsman with the Marine Corps. I wore a Marine Corps uniform, and I <clears throat> I carried a, a rifle and a pistol. Although, according to Geneva Convention, you're not supposed to, but we yeah. did yeah. because everybody else did, and you got shot at, of course. And, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, I spent all my time on the ground. It was. Yeah. Even though I was in the Navy, I was on yeah. land rather than sea. Yeah. Now, now, as far as 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 uh, the bat, the worst battles or anything like that, was there any particular time when it was worse than another, or was well? It? I think probably the, the first thing, of course, when we landed in Incheon, I never have anybody get mad enough to shoot at me, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. and we were going into the beach on an LST and. Uh, our gunner on our ship was killed, and then when we landed, we were on the beach, and uh, one of my real good friends from the Naval Hospital in New York was killed in the water, and that scared me, you know, because you know I was 18, 19 years, I think it was 19 then, yeah, it was 19, and you know it, uh, that was my first experience with uh, violent death, if you and. Uh, but I was in no major battles because as a corpsman, I, uh, I didn't do as much fighting as I did treating, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you were right up there with... I was with uh, same. The, the first, like I say, at Incheon with the 5th Regiment. That's 
the initial. First and then Wansan, when we landed there, why there was no resistance to speak of because the North Koreans had implanted all their guns on the shore. And and uh, by the time they swept the mines and we landed, everything was secure. And then, uh, so we didn't uh, we didn't take any casualties in the Wansan. And Inchon was, uh, if you read the history books, Inchon was uh, the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong people, the wrong war, and yet it worked for MacArthur because the next morning when, it, when, we, when the sun came up, we were on the beach, there was no water. The LSCs were just sitting in mud, and if he'd, he'd been a little bit off one way or another, we wouldn't have made the landing and we'd probably been sitting ducks. Yeah. I think the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff at that time tried to talk him out of it. I think Harry Truman tried to talk about it, but it turned out to be a, a good move because we were behind the North Koreans who had pushed down to the Pusan perimeter, and we were behind when we landed. We landed behind them, uh -huh. and uh, it looked like I got all my letters that I sent home. My father saved all my letters, and every letter I said, "No, I'll be home in another month, or I'll be yeah. home in a week. You know, yeah. I'll be home for Thanksgiving." And you know, that's what it seemed. It like. didn't. It didn't work that way. You know, I thought we were going to be home very quickly, and. Uh, yeah. It took 13 months while I was there, and of course the war lasted three years. Yeah. And uh, a lot of corpsmen that I know got killed. A yeah. lot of them. Yeah. In fact, the greater percentage of Navy people killed. Were, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Uh, I just read an article the other day. Uh, seven out of 17 Navy personnel. Deleted. I don't. I don't remember. I read something about the Medal of Honor. Most of the Medal of Honors given to Navy personnel were given to corpsmen. Uh huh. You know, which says right. something. For yeah. Anyway, well, you had to be right there where the people yeah. were getting injured. Yeah. And yeah. In fact, Clarkey, uh, he got shot on sight band in the elbow, and I, he might have told you. Yeah. And, uh, the doctor was going to take his arm off, and the corpsman saved his yeah. arm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and there must have been some other pretty. Oh yeah, pretty they, awful. they were. They were. You know, I mean, people were. Well, horrible wounds. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, civilians. Uh, I know I treated one one person who uh, who was a Korean civilian after the shelling, and uh, and his arm had been. They had put a tourniquet on his arm, and whoever did it didn't know he was supposed to release it, and the arm was. Well, we took the arm off. Yeah. And they, the people over there were very cruel to each other. Yeah. We had, uh, when we were going from Wonsan to Hung Nam, we were on a train. I told you that the gorillas blew up the tracks. Well, there was a train there was ahead of us, and uh, there was some people in the boxcars, Marines in the boxcars, and they opened the doors, and uh, they were killed by the gorillas, and then they went in there and they desecrated the bodies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we come up behind, and uh, our, our interpreter, his name was Shingo, by the way, he was an interpreter for our company. They grabbed a bunch of these people who were supposedly guerrillas, and they lined them up and shot them all. You know, no, no trial. They just said, "He's a gorilla," and they shot him. Yeah. You know, they didn't uh, didn't say, "Well, I was sure" or anything else. They yeah. just lined them up and shot him. And, and so they were they were cruel to each other as well. You know. Yeah. What were the people that you encountered over there like? I mean, were they? Farmers, or uh, a lot of farmers, uh, and also it used to hurt me a little bit in those days. Was well, when I got ready to come home, they used to protest. They didn't want us to go home, and yet the people who were protesting were old enough to defend their own country. Yeah. And you know, that's like yeah. you know, I, I stand around saying, you know, don't go home, save my bacon for me. You know. But uh, most of them were farmers in the south, especially in the north, was more industrialized, which was the part that was under the Russians. But there was no, I don't recall ever seeing dogs or cats or birds or, or like, for instance, we take for granted telephone poles and street lights and mailboxes. I never, don't recall ever seeing any of those. Now, they might very well have been, but. Uh, Not where you were. I don't remember seeing any. I, I think we see a couple of deer, but I don't remember seeing any domesticated animals, you know, like, well, maybe oxen, but I never see no cows, no horses, no dogs, no cats. I think they probably eat the cats. They probably eat the dogs too. <laughs> yeah. Now, what was the terrain like? Do you remember anything? Well, there was a lot of a lot of hilly, a lot of hilly terrain, and it was cold. It was very cold. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were up at Hung Nam, it uh, it got between 30 and 40 below zero. And uh, but it was a different type of cold. 
at least, of course I was young then, and maybe I didn't bother me as much, but it seemed like a drier cold than a damp cold. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it, there was a lot of, I think today, of walking up and down those hills with, with all the year on, and I think I couldn't, you know, I was young then, of course. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Did you know I, anything about where you were going before you headed over? No, I, um, I left, when I left, um, uh, San Diego, aboard uh, a ship called the Marine Phoenix, I wrote to my father and said that I uh, probably wouldn't hear from him beyond the sea. And we landed in Japan on the 2nd of September, and never forget because the typhoon hit that day and the ship took on a lot of water and then uh, buildings blew down and everything. And then I was transferred to an LST with the 5th Marines and, uh, and I assumed we were going to Korea then, but nobody really told you. Yeah. And I'm sure maybe I knew. But I don't recall. But uh, I'm sure and it that. showed up, and there you yeah. are. Yeah, and you know, and it was just like everybody else. I enlisted. Nobody drafted me, so I did what I was told and what went where I was told to go. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Today, I, I still think it was the right thing to do, but I just wonder sometimes if I was 18 again, if I'd do it again. I probably would. I probably would because, like I say, I enlisted, so I didn't, uh, you know, it was my fault. Yeah. You know, when you enlisted, they weren't, there, there wasn't anything. There was nothing. No, in 1948, there was uh -huh. nothing. Uh, it was, that was right after the Berlin crisis, I think, where they, with the, with the, we were bringing in the airlift, wasn't that? Well, you don't remember, you're not that old, but <laughs> I think the Berlin airlift was around the 40s, but there was no wars going on in 48 when I enlisted. You know. Yeah. And what made you decide to go in? to become a corpsman? Actually, I, when I got out of boot camp, I was supposed to go to Aviation Machinist Mate School in Tennessee, which made me very happy. And uh, in those days, all of a sudden, they needed so many people for this or so many people for that, so they sent me to corps school. And it's kind of ironic because I quit school and enlisted. And I wasn't a great student. Mm -hmm. the things that I liked, I was good at. The things I didn't like, I was horrible at yeah. when I went to school. So I enlisted, and they sent me to core school, which was a it's a, it's a tough course. It's a physics and pharmacy and material medic and a lot of um, medical knowledge. And we had 56 people in my class, and I graduated fifth from the top. Mm -hmm. And yet I didn't go to high school, or I didn't graduate from high school. But I think in those days, uh, I was still young enough that uh, when the man stood up there and said, "This is what you're going to do," you know, they didn't do it in school. You just were told what your assignment was, and that was it. The discipline was but in, it was discipline, and uh, so I graduated fifth in my class, which uh, you know made my father happy because I had quit school, yeah. and uh, and then I had my choice of duty station, so I took Naval Hospital in New York, and uh, they built a new one while I was in Korea. They built a new hospital down there. I think it's a VA hospital now. And uh, when we come back, they had named all the streets from for the corpsmen who had been killed in Korea that were stationed down there with me. And then after, so how, how did you end, end your service? I, when I came home, I had five more months to do, so I left the Fleet Marines and went back into the Navy and went to St. Albans, the Naval Hospital, went back there again and spent my last five months there and then kept this year. So I, I spent four years all told. Mm -hmm. And you had family back here? I, my father and my stepmother and two brothers, and uh, I wasn't married at the time. Mm -hmm. And were. Any, any of your brothers? In the my older brother was in the Army Air Corps in the Second World War. My younger brother was not in at all. He was lucky. He, uh, he was going to enlist when the Korean War, uh, well, not during, the, not the beginning of the Korean War. He was going to enlist, and, and he was married at the time. His wife had a baby, so they didn't take him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Any other memories of, of Korea, like when you hear about it in the news now? That you well, what amazes me is I worked for General Motors for 38 years, and we had a GMI student who was from Korea, mm -hmm. and he had a bunch of pictures, and it amazed me the high rises, the the super highways, and uh, yeah. uh, because I don't remember, like I said, I don't remember any big buildings, and nothing modern. And of yeah. course, this is you know this 44 years ago when I was there, but. Uh, it, uh, you didn't get into the cities too much, though. Did you? No, I, I got into Seoul, which was the capital of South Korea, but uh, that was pretty well. That was, you know, destroyed pretty well. And of course, the capital of the north, I think, is Pyongyang, and I was not there. 
when I was in uh, no large cities other than Seoul. Incheon was the port city. Wonsan was the port city. It's funny how memories come back, you know, because uh, yeah. Incheon was on one coast and Wonsan was on the other. But uh, Seoul, I think, was the biggest city I was in. Yeah. And, uh, and what did that what did it look like? I mean, well, it was. Um, I think I remember a movie theater. Of, it, it was it was bombed out, but I don't remember any big buildings. You know, like two or three stories. Even. I don't remember any. Now, very well might have been. Yeah. I don't remember. But I remember the north was more brick buildings, like industrial buildings, and hydroelectric plants and stuff like that. But uh, the south, I think the south was a little bit behind the times compared to the north. And we took care of it while Japan was in the north, uh, south and Russia was in the north after World War II. And, uh, now it's kind of the other way around. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, it's very modern today. Yeah. I always tell my wife I'd like to go back, but I, I don't know because it isn't going to be anywhere near the same. You know? Yeah. I ain't gonna, you know, I mean, where I landed, I'm sure there's probably a... Uh, Summer resort or something, and, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, times a lot, a lot happens in 45 yeah. years. Yeah, it does. Yeah, next year, hopefully, they're going to do the monument in Washington for the Korean War veterans. Uh -huh. And I told my wife I would really like to go. Yeah. And uh, I'll have a shirt printed from Novel T-shirts with my name, right, in my company. Maybe somebody will say, "Hey, I remember him." Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. you're ready for me. All right, thanks, Bill. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, come over and see the car someday. Maybe I, it is your father's. I, I hear it is. You know, I, that's what somebody told me. Matt Donahue or somebody yeah. told me. Yeah, it might very well be. Hey, thanks. I didn't know I had